Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a uh, lovely start to the weekend. This is a members chat class, everybody, and we are focusing on uh, writing task two uh, for the IELTS exam. Welcome, Yanni. Hi, Fuang. Welcome, Carolina, our chat moderator. Um, again, students, this is IELTS task two writing. Um, it's a 250 word minimum essay in 40 minutes and we're writing about children and finances in this uh, session. You will see this specific question in a few minutes. Um, students, uh, <clears throat> this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS, visit us there. You can get lots of writing help there, including editing assistance for your essays. For general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. Again, both of those websites have tons and tons of information to help you succeed on your IELTS exam, improve your English for your future plans, whether it's university or immigration. All you have to do, this is aehelp.com. Click on this big red join now button that's just above my head there. Um, it is a one-time payment for lifetime access. These websites are basically the course materials for these live classes. Uh, next class, which is in about two hours, we will be using this website for the listening audio to practice the listening section. We're an IDP affiliate. Uh, we're a British Council uh, partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent. We definitely know what we're doing and we are here to help you. Uh, for the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. It's the green background here. Click that big red button to join us there. It's just above my head. And again, it's a one-time payment. Um, when you do that, uh, you can use the code LIVE9, <clears throat> LIVE9. Uh, for a 10% discount off of the course to help you further. Again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. So uh, you are not going to spend a lot of money, a little bit of money for a lot of help. Um, welcome again, Slow Sunset Vibes to our membership. Hi, Sunantha, Kennel, Chen, Domenico. Nice to see many members joining in. That's fantastic. Get our apps from your app store, <clears throat> Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help. The apps link to the website, so Academic IELTS Help links to aehelp.com, General IELTS Help links to gieltshelp.com. And you can also email me if you have questions. Uh, send your emails to adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Um, <clears throat> students, uh, daylight savings have started last Sunday here in the West. Uh, that means the clocks got turned back an hour, so our live classes start an hour later, uh, 13.30 Universal Standard Time on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, pay attention to that. Again, we'll have uh, more classes after this class and uh, tomorrow. And then uh, we're going to have a Discord class um, this Sunday. So check that out on Discord. Uh, the Discord server is IELTS Prep. Here's the link in the chat. It's a free class. Um, it's a bit of a different platform than YouTube. It's very useful. IELTS Prep is our official Discord uh, partner and they are a great group of people. Um, students, IELTS students, IELTS learners, it's um, a platform that's uh, created by IELTS learners for IELTS learners, so check it out. Um, and then, <clears throat> sorry, there's a frog in my throat still, I'm getting over this flu, but uh, I'm good. Um, new video on YouTube, check that out. There you go. 
Uh, and we'll have a new YouTube video coming out this weekend as well, tomorrow. So, exciting. Okay, uh, students, let's get into it. Alt's writing. Um, the uh, Alt's writing task two, it's 40 minutes. Again, uh, minimum 250 words. Okay, a lot of people are confused about what is this word limit. Uh, let me tell you what that means. It means you must uh, write at least uh, 250 words uh, to get a uh, completed uh, grade on the essay. If you write less than 250, you lose marks. If you write more, than 250 words. Uh, you get more marks as long as it is good writing. Uh, band seven to nine essays are around 300 to 320 words, even 350. Um, we talk to IELTS examiners all the time. I've taken the IELTS exam several times. We talk to people at British Council. Everybody that we asked and talked to about this, they said, yeah, high band essays, 7.589, they're more than 250 words. It's very difficult to have a good essay uh, that's just 250 words. So it's a little bit more usually, okay? You can't just aim for exactly 250 words. All right, um, so your first step when you see the question, and this is after task one, you should always do task one first. As you read the question, all right. Um, Sanantha, if you're having a problem with the Discord app, you'll have to check it out on your end. That's a big app. Um, so it's like saying you have a problem with Facebook. Um, I have no idea where to help you troubleshoot that. Um, maybe if you share it in the chat, somebody can give you some advice. Um, all right. So uh, let's read the question. Step one, read it. Read the question carefully, okay? Make sure you understand it. Don't rush reading the question. So let's read this. Uh, you should spend about 40 minutes on this task. Some people believe that it is important to own a home and have a good job before having children while others disagree. Discuss both views and give your own opinion. Use examples and explanations from your own experience. Okay. Um, let's make sure that we understand this question. Let's gather some useful vocabulary. To do that, we paraphrase the question, meaning we use our own words to state the question again. Now, again, this is not your essay. Paraphrasing the question is not your essay. A lot of people think it is. They get this idea that you start your essay just by paraphrasing. And it's not a bad idea, but it's not necessarily your essay, okay? So um, you want to just paraphrase it to make sure you understand it and so you get some good vocabulary. So let's do that. Um, let's paraphrase this question. I'm going to do that. Members, do that as well. So I want you to write lots in this class. My goal is to finish this essay in the class. So the introductory paragraph, body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and the conclusion. So step two here is paraphrase the question to get um, a clear idea, vocabulary, and uh, use in the essay. So we might use it in the introduction, we might use it later on, I'm not sure yet, but um, we'll definitely make use of the paraphrase, okay? All right, and so let's do this. Some people, certain individuals.
ascertain. Ascertain is a nice uh, kind of way to say believe. Ascertain means have this notion or have the idea. Okay, so certain individuals ascertain that it is necessary. Okay, instead of the word important, I'm going to use the word necessary. Um, to own a home, purchase a house. Uh, have a good job and um, uh, get a good career or start a good career. Okay, instead of job. Um, before having offspring. Offspring is a good paraphrase for children in this case when we're talking about having children. So, <clears throat> While others disagree, I suppose what that means is while other um, people do not feel this is uh, fundamental. Um, to becoming parents. Okay. So there's my paraphrase, and when you're practicing at home, you should always check. You should always check the original, and you should always check the paraphrase, compare them, make sure you're happy, uh, make sure that um, it's accurate, make sure you didn't include extra information in your paraphrase, make sure that you didn't lose information in your paraphrasing, okay? So some people believe that it is important to own a home and have a good job before having children while others disagree. Certain individuals ascertain that it is necessary to purchase a house and start a good career before having offspring while other people do not feel this is fundamental to becoming parents. Okay, I'm starting to get some good vocabulary, some good ideas. Hopefully you can see that as well. Um, Discuss both views, explain both sides, and give your own opinion, provide uh, your own uh, perspective. Okay. Use examples and explanations from your own experience. So um, apply your own um, past knowledge and instances um, to support the essay. Sure, okay. So there's my paraphrase. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, I think it makes sense just like that and I've got lots of vocabulary. Uh, let's see what Chen has come up with. Again everybody, this is a members chat class to become a member. Uh, click the join button next to the subscribe button and then you can also contribute your writing and I can check it. Okay, just like I'm doing for Chen right now. So Chen says, millions of individuals ascertain that it is crucial to have a house and um, quality profession, Chen, we don't need that, just a profession. Because a profession is a good career, okay? Profession, professional, a profession. Prior to having kids, however, the other side because it's the unique side that opposes the idea um, the other side disapproves of this claim okay we need to finish that idea Chen disapproves of this claim explain both um, beliefs not in instead of reasons both beliefs and provide your own thoughts Okay, good. All right, Chen, so just a couple of small grammatical and language mistakes. Um, not the end of the world. Pay attention to those. Otherwise, it's a pretty good paraphrase, okay? Now, remember that you are um, requested to apply your own past, so use your own experiences, okay? All right. Um, Domenico, I see what you're saying, so I'm paying attention to the chat. Domenico says, I tend to write my essays on average, it's 330 words. Domenico, that's good. 
So if your essay is about 330 words of good writing, that's what you need to do for those band 8, band 9, even a 7.5. So that's a good word count, okay? Um, students who are good in English, very good in English, or expert users, so the 7, 8, 9 band levels, should be able to write 300, 330 words for these task 2 essays. Absolutely, okay? With touch typing, that should not be a problem. So that's a good word count, Domenico, 330, okay? Uh, Slow Sunset um, says, Sir, what do you think is the most important section of the test? What should I devote my time to? Um, there is no such concept as the most important section because they're equal weighted. It means that they each impact your overall score equally. So listening is 25%, reading is 25%, um, writing, speaking are 25%. So uh, having said that, Slow Sunset, I think that the hardest mark, so the hardest section to get a good mark is the writing section, okay? So what you want to do is check out um, what is your weakest area and then focus on that one so that you can bring it up to balance the other sections, okay? All right, now having said that, uh, Slow Sunset Vibes um, has... <clears throat> this paraphrase let's check it out okay uh, so slow sunset vibe says some individuals advocate the importance of possessing a dwelling as well as having a good and stable career uh, before having children. Uh, slow sunset, good. Um, avoid repetition in your writing so that you don't waste time and energy on that. So having a stable career, it's good. Uh, before having children, whereas others disagree, discuss both standpoints, share your own views on this topic. Okay, very nice. Um, slow sunset vibe um, has this vocabulary to contribute, advocate and standpoints. Very nice. Advocate means to argue for, okay, and a standpoint is another way to say a perspective, okay, it's the point where you're standing from, it's your perspective, so nice vocabulary there, see how paraphrasing teaches you all of that very valuable uh, vocabulary, okay. Oh, Rajveer, long time no see. Uh, Rajveer Singh in the class, one of our longest time members, hence the gold um, avatar, the gold little icon beside his head there. Uh, Rajveer, there you go. Look at that little gold IELTS hero of ours there. All right, Rajveer. Rajveer, a very studious person. Um, good to see you. Uh, Rajveer says, certain individuals ascertain that it is critical to buy a house and start a good career before becoming parents, whereas others disagree with it. Um, I would say disagree with this, um, this idea, right? So with this, um, explain both viewpoints. Viewpoints and standpoints are very close synonyms. Okay, and give your own position. Nice. Um, see everybody how there's so many different great ways to paraphrase the um, question. So Chen, Sunset Vibes, uh, Rajveer all did a fantastic job of paraphrasing. These are all very high level um, sentences and good uh, writing, high band scores. And they're quite different. They're each unique and mine's unique as well. So there's some slight similarities here and there, but overall they're all using different words. Each are unique and um, they're very good. We see members of different levels here with the green, red, and gold heads. Okay, Retha, Romelia, nice to have you in the class. Okay, Romelia is asking, um, can we also use Outlook? Um, yeah, Romelia, you can um, explain both uh, outlooks and give your own position. It's okay. In this context, the out I wouldn't use outlook as much, Romelia. So Romelia is, as, is asking, is outlook the same as perspectives? Outlook um, is kind of like perspective, but it also includes 
um, a sense of uh, prediction. And so in this case, it's not as accurate as viewpoint or standpoint, um, but it works. It does work. It's just not as good of a pick as uh, viewpoint or standpoint. Standpoint, viewpoint are more present. Outlook is more towards the future. Like, let me give you a sentence here, um, Romelia, so that you can learn it. And this is for everybody. Um, their outlook for the next... Uh, 20 years was uh, quite depressing as they uh, predicted a major climate change. Okay, so that would be uh, an example sentence with outlook, Romelia. Outlook is it's kind of like outwards, so we're looking in towards the future in a sense. Okay, it's good. Yeah, there are so. Even the words paraphrase each other, and we have some words that are nearly perfect synonyms. There are often very subtle or slight differences in the um, actual meaning of these synonyms in context. So it's sometimes tricky, and that's why you definitely want to try uh, different ways and get feedback to learn what works in which context, okay? All right. Yes, absolutely, Romelia. It's a very important um, part of high-level English to not only use the most natural word in the context, but also to use the best word in the context. Okay. All right. Um, Fuang, Yanni, I see that you have some writing there too. That's great. Uh, we're going to keep moving, but keep writing because I will take writings from different members at different times throughout the class, okay? So that was step two, to paraphrase the question, to start getting a clear idea, to get some vocabulary um, and uh, so that we can start using that in the essay. Now we go to step three, where we identify the topic and the controlling idea, okay? So in this case, the topic is um, what are we talking about? So what is this essay discussing? Okay. That's what you have to think about um, when you uh, think about the topic. Okay. Um, in this case, what is the topic? So what is this essay seeking to discuss? What is it asking you to deliberate on? Deliberate on means to um, express the yeses, the noes, or the this is what's needed, this is what's not needed. So what is this essay asking you to deliberate on? Okay. When you think about the topic, um, when you're practicing in the IELTS, always think of the original question, not your paraphrase. So some people believe that it is important to own a home and have a good job before having children while others disagree. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Okay, so what is the topic here? Okay, um, Romelia says um, children and finances. Um, slow sunset vibe says upsides and downsides of building a family between having before having a stable career. <coughs> Kennel says financial security before having a child. Yanni says financial and future. Chen says stable lifestyle before having offspring. Um, notice that your answers are all a little bit different, right? Ideally, in a perfect world, we all have almost the same answer to this question. Sometimes it's tricky. Sometimes it's a little bit hidden, the topic. Possessing house and job before offspring. Um, Rakia, um, Rakia says uh, future safety. Creative Edge says self-dependence to feed children. So notice how a lot of you have different kind of ideas about the topic, which is a dangerous situation because it means that many of you are probably not thinking about this exactly in the right way, okay? So uh, think about this. In an IELTS class, 
um, the perfect uh, situation is where all students have the same idea or the same answer. If the answers are different, it means many people don't clearly understand the topic. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so, it, I mean, it shows. Rajveer has been um, a student for a while. So for a couple of years now, Rajveer, um, you've been a student and you've had a lot of practice. And I know that you particularly like these questions. Um, so have a look at what um, Rajveer wrote. Uh, Rajveer said, the perfect time to have children. Yeah, exactly. That's what I would go with. So, the right context to have children. So that's the topic, right? So the question, so the question, saying, okay, that some there's some people that say that you know you need a house, you need a good job to have children. Other people disagree. That means other people don't think you need a house or a good career. Uh, to have children. So what is this essay really talking about? It's talking about the right context, the right time, the right conditions to have children. So okay, all of those would be um, a good uh, identification of the topic, okay? All right, everybody sees that. So now that we've identified the topic, does everybody see that that's the topic? So the essay is really asking you because it's asking for your opinion as well, right? So um, it could be something completely different than a house or a job. Maybe some of you say, well, all you need is a car to have children or a dog. I don't know, it's up to you, right? What you decide, we'll decide that in a moment. But really what the question is truly focusing on is the right condition or the right time to have children in life, okay? Does everybody see that now? That's what you should identify. Now at home, when you're practicing essay writing, this is extremely important. You should never write an essay before you clearly identify the topic because then even with great English, your essay will be like, right? So a 5.5 or a 6 or a 6.5 at best, okay? So you should never start writing an essay, or <coughs> start to write an essay, I should say, before you have a clear topic. It, for obvious reasons, right? Okay, and then the controlling idea. Now you can say controlling idea, um, the right context uh, to have children includes a house and job or uh, some other uh, requirement. Okay, all right. And so that's where we're going with this, all right? Okay, and so now that we have the topic and the controlling idea, okay, clearly in our minds, uh, we can think about um, this critically, okay? So, uh, what does it mean to have the right context to have children? Okay, now I'm going to answer these. You can give me answers while I go through this. So this is basically the next step. This is step four in my essay writing uh, strategy, okay, for the IELTS exam, for those of the, you who are joining in. Step four is to think uh, critically asking uh, what, uh, why, um, and how about the topic 
and a controlling idea. Okay. So what does it mean uh, to have the right context to have children, right? It means to provide an environment where a child can grow and develop well. Um, okay, uh, why is it important to have this context so that the child can uh, live a happy and healthy life? Okay, so here, um, this, now some of you are thinking, okay, Adrian, but we just have 40 minutes. What are we doing here? I don't have enough time for this in the real IELTS exam. Um, so for those of you who don't know this, um, you're practicing this at home. In the real IELTS exam, yeah, you probably don't have enough time to write all this down unless you're extremely fast. But your brain is extremely fast and you can certainly think about this extremely quickly. So in the real exam, you don't write this down. In the, in the real exam, these are thoughts inside your head, okay? So at home, this is on paper. Um, in the real exam, this step happens in your head. Okay, all right, that's clear. Romelia says to, uh, to uh, be able to avoid the use of you, Romelia, no need for ascertain, to be able to satisfy children's psychological and financial needs, psychological and physical needs with finances, sure. Slow Sunset Vibe says being able to provide a safe environment where children can be nurtured in the best possible way. Sure, so here there are lots of answers. I mean, we could write books about this, right? Your goal uh, here as a student is to just focus your ideas, take the easiest path to get that high band essay, okay? So uh, those are some good answers, Romelia and Slow Sunset Vibes. It's the right question, Rajveer, okay? Um, so why is it important to have this context so the child can live a happy and healthy life? All right. How can this be achieved? By having enough money to uh, provide uh, sustenance needs. Sustenance, spelt... S-U-S-T-E-N-A-N-C-E, -E, sustenance needs. Sustenance needs are like uh, food, um, shelter, clothing, okay? Um, that's sustenance needs. So by having enough money to provide sustenance uh, needs, okay? And uh, through lots of emotional Support, okay. Um, so when I'm thinking about emotional support for children, what am I thinking about? One word, and hopefully many of you can think about this. What do you think it is? So maybe some of you are parents, maybe some of you are planning to be parents. Maybe some of you have not thought about this yet, but of course we all have parents. So even if you're not parents yet, and I know some of you are probably thinking, well, Adrian, this essay could be tricky for me because I, I'm only 18 years old or I'm only, you know, I'm just graduating high school. I haven't really thought about parenting and parenthood, but certainly you can empathize now. You're old enough at 18 to understand from the parent's perspective, um, from mom and dad's perspective, what is required. Yeah, okay, so nice. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see that many of you got that question. So Slow Sunset Vibe says love, and Fuang says love. Um, Chen says caring and loving, attention, empathy. Yeah, so through lots of emotional support, love and empathy, right? 
And um, as a parent, you realize that that's the most important part of parenting is to care emotionally for uh, your child, okay? So how can this be achieved? By having enough money to provide sustenance needs, food, shelter, clothing, and through lots of emotional support, love, and empathy. Okay, um, good. All right, so we've kind of identified that now. Okay, so I can think about the controlling idea now, okay, um, from, critic, from a critical perspective. Okay, so here the question that I'm going to ask myself is does a home and a good job provide all of these needs? Um, and let's be more specific. So does a home and a good job provide uh, food, shelter, clothing, and love? Okay. Answer that question for me. So what do you think, uh, members? And think critically, okay? You're academics um, you're thinking about this as academics as smart high school students university students um, having a home and having a good job is that the same as having food shelter clothing and love so if I don't have a good job does it mean that I'm not able to provide uh, food shelter and clothing if I have a home does that mean I also am able to provide um, love to children. What do you think? And of course, this is very, very important because this is going to establish my thesis statement. My thesis statement being my position of argument, right? So Rakwaya says, I think not really, but these can provide some facilities. Okay, so um, let's try to rephrase that, Raquia. I think you're on the right track. Um, Fuang says, not all, but it satisfies most of the demands. So, so although a home and a good career do provide important um, support, for having children. Yeah, so Rajvir says these are different are and are subjective to a person, right? So yes, they're not inclusive, right? So whenever you're thinking about your essay and your argument points, okay, here's an important strategy or tip. And this might be even a new one for you, Rajvir. So, um, when you are thinking about your argument points, which are your points for your thesis, uh, you need to consider whether they are mutually exclusive or inclusive, right? This is often the question of an argument. This is often the question of an essay, right? Is does one equal the other? So does a home, right? So uh, let's do it this way. Does a job, so does a job, here let me do it over, let's see, there. Uh, does a job equal money? Um, not necessarily. They're kind of like this, right? So um, somebody can have a good job, like be a doctor, but they might be in a great amount of debt from all of their studies and expenses to become a doctor, right? Uh, somebody might be um, a janitor um, or um, work at McDonald's, but maybe they inherited millions of dollars from their 
grandparents or their rich uncle or something, right? So job and money are not always equal, right? They often are strongly connected, but they're not always equal. It also depends on the way we invest money, the way we save money, the way we use money. So job is only one part of the money equation, right? Um, having a house um, means that, you know, somebody is able to provide a home, but it's certainly not necessarily equal to love or emotional support. So somebody might be under a lot of stress to um, pay for a house, especially these days. Houses are very expensive and I'm sure there are a lot of people, especially right now in the world, who are very stressed trying to pay for their expensive house and that might create less um, emotional support and love in the family, right? So. You really have to think about this uh, mutually exclusive or mutually inclusive, okay? Um, keep in mind, students, that in IELTS, band seven, band eight, band nine essays have to have good logic and good argument, okay? So, IELTS Band 7 to 9 essays must have a good logic and argument, okay? You can't just write, um, this essay will discuss both views, all right? Okay. So, um, here we go. Let's keep going here. Um, so, I've come to this thought, although a home and a career uh, do provide important support for having children, these are not essential um, for um, fostering offspring. Okay, fostering means to give birth, take care, raise. Okay, notice this high level vocabulary here fostering offspring. Okay. Um, all right, so although a home and a good career do provide important support for having children, these are not essential for fostering offspring. I believe that um, providing sustenance needs and emotional support are critical okay so and so i don't repeat the word give okay all right um so here this now becomes my thesis statement Okay, the thesis statement is the most important sentence or sentences, in this case it's two, of your essay. This comes at the end of the introductory paragraph and shows the reader the clear uh, position and structure of the essay okay <coughs> so here I have a two-part th thesis meaning I have two sentences and basically uh, the first sentence is my body paragraph one And um, my second sentence is my second body paragraph. Okay. All right, is everybody following with me so far? So members, do you see how I arrived at this point? Do you see how I looked at the question Okay, so just to kind of reiterate what we've done so far, I looked at the question, or we looked at the question, 
We made sure that we understand it by paraphrasing it. We made sure that we understood what the question is really focusing on, what it's targeting on by thinking critically about the topic and then the controlling ideas. We understood the arguments, the requirements, right? And now I've condensed it. I've come up with a uh, thesis statement which gives me a clear structure and direction for the essay. Okay. Now, in a perfect world, when you're practicing this at home regularly and in your school essays, you can do this quite quickly. Okay. You have to. This is the training of your logical thought. This sets the foundation for your ability to critically analyze and respond to situations and challenges in school, in work, and in life. So this is not, a, it's not to be underestimated the importance of uh, developing this kind of thinking. Okay, all right. So this is the way that we shape our world and this is the way that we're able to shape the world around us. All right, the people who make history, the people who write history, are those people who become experts at this kind of um, logical reasoning, deduction, and argument. This is what the Greeks called rhetoric and established philosophy which set the foundation for all education and modern civilization, okay? So you might be thinking, okay, it's just an essay, right? But no, it's not. And there's a reason why IELTS puts so much emphasis on this task two essay, okay? All right, Domenico, Carolina, Fuang, Rajvir, Karina, Chen, Yani, Raquia, Chanello, Creative, Ed, Sanantha are all on board. That's awesome. All right. Romelia says, we should instill love and confidence in children and they will flourish. Yes, exactly. When you become parents, you will soon realize that kids do not care whether you live in a 100 square meter home, a 500 square meter home, or a 50 square meter home, as long as they feel loved and supported. Okay. All right. Um, and a child who lives in a mansion but does not feel love and support will be sad, I guarantee you. Okay, so make sure you have those priorities in check. Um, <clears throat> don't let people convince you otherwise. Of course, everybody loves living in a castle. I'm not saying that's not fun. Okay, um, so let's write this. Now that we have good ideas, uh, we can write this. So why is it important to have a good thesis? Well, keep this in mind, students. For those of you who are critical and pessimistic and like, well, Adrian, it's just 40 minutes though. Yeah, but re keep this in mind. Okay, so so keep in mind that with a good thesis statement, you can write uh, much faster and uh, better essays. Okay, <clears throat> so that's why. So um, uh, kind of a, the concept in good writing is start slow. Um, finish quick, okay? Okay, um, instead of um, start fast. And finish horribly, okay? Uh, so keep that in mind, okay? So good essay writing, you start slow, you finish fast instead of starting fast and finishing horribly. All right, keep that in mind. All right, introductory paragraph, let's do this. Um, it has a hook, it has the background, and it has the thesis. Now, um, I'm going to get cracking here. Uh, I want you to follow with me, okay? Many of you already know what you're doing for each of these, so this is the hook. Um, a hook is an interesting fact um, that uh, catches the reader's attention. It introduces the topic, right? And in IELTS, 
you don't have to overdo it, okay? When you're doing a university essay or you're writing for a magazine, um, sure, this is going to take lots of time. You think of 20, 30 different hook statements. You pick the best one. For the IELTS, no. So I'm teaching you to write a great essay for the IELTS, but I'm not teaching you to write a book necessarily, although it is the foundations for that. It's the same idea. But I'm, I just want you to get a band eight or a band nine on your IELTS essay, okay? So uh, we're not going to look at 20, 30 different hook uh, statements and choose the best one and figure out why it's the best one. But, you know, we're just going to take the topic. The topic is talking about the right context to raise children, right? So I'm going to take that and turn it into a hook. Uh, most parents wish to provide the best possible environment for their children. I think we can agree with that. And I think that we can all kind of think, well, that's interesting. Yeah, let's read a little bit more. All right. <clears throat> So now comes the background, okay? And uh, for those of you who are new to this in the aisles, don't write H or don't write BG. Uh, that's just for everybody to know what I'm dealing with, okay? Background is definitions and importance, all right? Now, um, write this. So members, write the hook, write the background, write the thesis. I will look at it in the chat and I will give you feedback. Rajveer writes, millions of parents are confused about the right context for having children. That's another good one. So see for the hook, um, I might actually use this Rajveer for my background of the reason why we're discussing this. <clears throat> Cause I think that's the reason, like these days a lot of parents don't know and they're confused. So that's the importance of the question as well. But Rajveer for the for the hook writes millions of parents are confused about the right context for having children. Yeah. I agree that would be a great hook too. Rajveer, okay? Um notice how Rajveer says right context for having children, that's the topic right there. Um environment for their children, that's my topic right there. Okay, so the topic is included in my hook. Okay. Um, background. An ideal context allows uh, children to develop and succeed in life. But it is unclear what this may be, okay? So there's my background. Again, for the IELTS, you don't have to overthink it. Of course, the better you write, the better the chance you're gonna get a great score, but as long as you have a solid hook, a solid background, you're going to get a solid band score, okay? So most parents wish to provide the best possible environment for their children. An ideal context allows children to develop and succeed in life, but it is unclear what this may be. Okay, good. Um, creative edge. <clears throat> Caregivers like to have the best environment for their kids before um, their birth in order to nourish them cautiously. Okay, creative edge. Instead of before their birth, um, we don't need that, it's it's fine. So caregivers like to have the best environment um, before having kids in order to uh, nurture them carefully. Uh, Fuang says, most parents always want to nurture their children in the best possible environment. Fuang, good, that's a good hook. Yanni, mostly, oh, Yanni, don't erase, leave it there, let us look at it, okay? All right, and then comes my thesis. And all I'm doing now for my thesis is I'm just copying it in right there. Okay, and I have my introductory paragraph. 
Now in the IELTS, make sure that you review each paragraph after you finish writing it, especially the introduction. So review each paragraph for um, content and language mistakes after you finish writing it. Okay, especially the introduction. The introduction be especially careful about because that's your first step, your first impression, okay? So here, I'm just going to review this. Um, most parents wish to provide the best possible environment for their children. An ideal context allows children to develop and succeed in life but it is unclear what this might be. Although a home and a good career do give important support for having children, these are not essential for fostering offspring. I believe that providing sustenance needs and emotional support is critical. Okay, that definitely looks like I'm on a path for a band eight or a band nine. I feel good about that, okay? Yanni writes, mostly parents are thinking critically about the essential preparations for the sake of their future kids. Yeah, Yanni, that works because the essential preparations are the context for having kids, right? Um, yeah, okay, Raquia. Um, this is what Raquia wrote. It's a nice uh, hook. Let's take it. Uh, I'm going to correct it a little bit. Araquiyad, but it's uh, it's nice, okay? Um, most parents, avoid superlatives um, like all parents because we can't speak for all parents, but most parents want to uh, give their children the best atmosphere uh, for them the best atmosphere for their children to flourish. Flourish is a nice uh, vocabulary here, Raquia. Okay. Flourish um, is another way to say thrive in this case, okay? Thrive means to do well in life. Okay, so good. We have an idea for the hook. We have an idea for the background. We have an idea for the thesis. Now we can write our body paragraph, okay? Body paragraph uh, one is thesis point one better explained okay so here um, thesis point one is although a home and a good career do give important support for having children these are not essential for fostering offspring okay that's my first point in my thesis that clearly tells my reader that this is going to be the topic of my first body paragraph okay all right, uh, Domenico, that hook is looking a little bit long. Try to write it again, but try to write it in a shorter way. A good hook, students, should only be about 10 to 12 words, uh, especially for the IELTS. Um, you don't want to make mistakes in the hook. It just looks really bad when your first sentence has mistakes, okay? So write a simple hook that's just clear and to the point and shows the reader that you've identified the topic, okay? Sunantha, hook, families wish to provide a wealthy environment for their children. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so body paragraph one explained. Okay. Although a home and a good career do give important support for having children, these are not essential for fostering offspring. Um, let's start with a topic sentence. So body paragraphs have a topic sentence. 
explanations and examples. Okay. Um, students, keep writing. And um, if you're still on the hook or the background or you're still thinking about your thesis, that's okay. Uh, just use these markers so I know what part of the essay you're writing on. Okay, so use the H or the BG or the T. Okay, maybe I'll use a different color here. <clears throat> and then I know what you're what you're writing. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, let me write the topic sentence here. All right. So. Um, so since a home provides shelter and a good career provides finances, children <clears throat> have a better chance at um, a positive environment. for growth but these do not automatically uh, give uh, emotional support um, for what did I use kids children kids okay so since a home provides shelter and a good career provides finances, children have a better chance at a positive environment for growth, but these do not automatically give emotional support for kids. Indeed, it is often the case that um, professions and homes take a lot of time and energy away uh, from parents and children are neglected which leads to poor self-confidence and uh, mental health right okay so thinking about this uh, critically again right so this first sentence here's my topic sentence okay and the second sentence here is my explanation okay so all I'm doing here students is I've I've taken um, my uh, thesis point one and I've expanded it in more detail visualizing it and explaining it why am I able to come up with this clearly because I was thinking about all of this during the planning so when I was critically thinking about the topic and the controlling ideas then I was actually thinking about you know well what does that mean okay if somebody's like working as a doctor um, or as a computer programmer and a, or a manager in a company that can take a lot of time and energy away from parents and yeah there are lots of kids living in big houses with lots of money but they certainly don't get to see their parents enough and they definitely don't get the energy and the emotional support from their parents needed to really foster their uh, mental health and development right and I think we can agree with this. I think a lot of us have uh, seen this at some point in our experiences, hopefully not experiencing it yourselves. Okay. Uh, Domenico, these days parents are thinking rationally about providing children with the nicest surroundings for them to thrive. The nicest surroundings, Domenico, 
uh, for them to thrive. Not healthily, you don't need that, just to thrive. Uh, sunset vibes. Moreover, this notion is often depicted as having parents who are focused on career and they end up emotionally neglecting their offspring. Nice. So slow sunset. I can see that you're in your body paragraph and it's looking good. It goes without say that children are liable to flourish provided they have a shelter and stable financial situation. But these do not necessarily mean that they're emotionally happy. Uh, slow sunset. It's good writing. Just make sure that you're focusing on the one thesis point in this body paragraph. Okay. Rajveer, having a private home and a well-paying job empowers parents with essentials to rear their children in the best possible way. You don't need the word shelter and finances, Rajveer. It's understood from well-paying um, job. So be concise, okay? That's what you want to do. When your writing starts to become a good strong band seven to eight level, then to make it that band eight to band nine, you want to be concise. It means you want to read what you write and take out any repetitive and unnecessary information. Okay. All right. Nicely done, students. Moving along nicely. Now, the example. Um, I'm writing a first person essay. Um, you can see that I use the first person voice right here, I believe. So this tells the author that this is a first person author's voice. It's subjective, it's a personal opinion because the question is asking for it, right? Right here, um, way at the top, you can see, uh, discuss both views, give your own opinion. Use examples, explanations from your own experience. It's asking me to use I, me, my, okay? Uh, some people think that you can't use I or me or my in task two. It depends on the question. If it's clearly asking you for your opinion, you can use I, me, my. Okay. <clears throat> in this case, it's definitely asking me for my personal opinion. So uh, I'm using the first person, I believe. And another way to use that, of course, throughout the essay is in the examples. Okay. So... There. Uh, one of my, so this is my example here. Okay, so one of my good friends, John, is often depressed because his parents, who are a doctor, who are a doctor and a lawyer, we're always so busy with their careers that they paid little attention to his emotional needs. Okay, um, and for me, that's kind of like, you know, my connecting concluding sentence. But if I want to add a connecting concluding sentence, um, I can do that. So, clearly, a good job and owning a home are not, and we can use the word here that I just uh, showed you earlier, are not mutually inclusive um, of providing a good environment for having children. Okay, so here is my first body paragraph, 
okay, with topic sentence, explanation, example, and concluding sentence. Now, some of you who are watching, um, you might have had some simpler IELTS lessons where they say, uh, write the topic sentence and the supporting points. The explanation, the example, those are the supporting points, okay? They're synonymous, they're the same, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Yanni writes, although the home provides the facility for supporting children's growth, these are not enough to um, encourage their emotions. Yeah, and Yanni, you don't need growth and development. So just choose one word, okay? Don't be repetitive with your words, uh, students. So don't write growth and development. Just write development and then later write growth. You're going to use that information again and again anyway, okay? Chinello writes, having a good home and a job is a positive for fostering children but it is more crucial to show love as this helps improve growth and development. So, Chinello, I'm going to use your um, writing here to give feedback to everybody for what you need to do when you write. Okay, Chinello, it's a good example. Thank you for, thank you for your contribution. Okay, so Chinello, as this is, this would be like a band six. Okay, and we're going to improve this to a band seven. So, having a good home and job is positive for fostering uh, children. Okay, so notice how I took all of this and I fixed the grammar and I made it shorter. Okay. So having a good home and a job is a on the positive side on child's fostering. Having a good home and job is positive for fostering children. But it is. Notice how I correct this contraction here. Okay. Uh, more crucial, sure, to give love instead of show love um, as this helps improve psychological development okay so we take out the will because we don't jump to the future so we avoid using the future tense the future participle okay I take out the growth because growth is repetitive with development, okay? And just reorganize a little bit for clarity. So this would be your band nine level writing. All right, so <clears throat> having a good home and a job is on the, on the positive side on child's fostering, but it's more crucial to show love and empathy as this will help improve their growth and development. <clears throat> so here it is having a good home and job is positive for fostering children but it is more crucial to give love as this helps improve psychological development right you see that okay yeah Romelia I think that's a good correction we don't need the word more crucial We can just say, but it is crucial, okay? We can do that, we can take out the more, because crucial does include the meaning of very. Um, we don't necessarily need more, so being more and more concise is definitely a good idea. And I would probably use rather crucial, but it is rather crucial to give love, okay? Instead of more crucial. Or if I'm being super picky. But that's, you know, again, if you're writing a book, that's the kind of editing that you want to do. For the IELTS, you don't have to go overboard. All right. Uh, Yanni, um, no, it's a good question. I think 
Yanni, what you're asking me is, is it compulsory to write a concluding sentence like this one? Clearly a good job in owning a home. No, it's not. Um, concluding sentence is not absolutely key. Uh, some paragraphs don't really need a concluding sentence. Like in this case, uh, for my first body paragraph, in all honesty, I, I don't feel the need for this concluding sentence. Some people really feel that IELTS, they're looking for this. Some examiners have said that they really like to see that concluding sentence at least once. So I'm showing you. But if I'm teaching you true essay writing, um, which I like to believe that I am, um, it's not absolutely necessary, Yanni. Okay. All right. Um, so body paragraph two. Body two. Okay. Um, so sustenance needs and emotional support. Okay. In order for children to succeed in life, let's make that even better, to be happy. Because my definition of success is happiness. So in order for children, now this is my topic sentence. Okay, remember what I said? Sustenance needs and um, emotional support, right? So in order for children to be happy, in life, they need the basics of food, uh, shelter, and clothing, as well as um, love and confidence. There. Uh, all I've done here is... Um, Defined. I've defined sustenance needs and I've defined um, emotional support. Okay, in my topic sentence. All right. So, explanation coming up. Um, the development of children is best perceived as both physical and psychological. For the former, good nutrition and uh, warmth is needed for the latter it's it is caring and empathy from parents that is required these can be given even if a home is rented and just thinking about the job aspect right we don't need a profession to give somebody um, uh, a home or warmth, right? And um, minimal amount of finances are um, secured. Okay. Okay. Um, so again, and anytime you're not sure, just read, right? So the development of children is best perceived as both physical and psychological. For the former, good nutrition and warmth are needed. For the latter, it is caring and empathy from parents that is required. These can be given. I'm going to start a new sentence there. Uh, these can be given or let's make it active. Now, here's an interesting rule that might be new for some of you. Um, and as you get into the higher levels of writing, you do need to know these rules of writing. 
The rule in professional <clears throat> and academic writing is you should use the active voice whenever possible. So in this sentence, I'm using the passive voice. These can be given. This is passive voice. Um, parents can uh, give uh, this support even if the home is rented and a minimal amount of finances are secured, okay? And uh, with a minimal amount of finances, all right? As long as parents have time and energy to spend with their children. Okay. All right. There we go. Now we fixed it. It's looking good. Uh, what do I need next? Example, right? So, um, what did I use in my previous sentence? I used my friend John. So one of my good friends, John, is often depressed because his parents, who are a doctor and a lawyer, were always so busy with their careers that they paid little attention to his emotional needs. Okay. So uh, maybe let's use one of my other friends. Um, my friend Mary... Um, has a part-time job and rents an apartment, but she spends a lot of time with her daughter, who seems a very happy and satisfied, uh, very happy and confident. Okay, it's my example. Now, the conclusion. Okay, and I'm moving along here uh, nice and smooth, students, so that we can finish this whole essay so that you get a clear idea of what's needed. The concluding paragraph also has three parts, okay? It has the points uh, restated. Um, it has the argument strengthened. And it has a take-home message. Okay? So this is where, for instance, you might want to use the paraphrase of the question, okay? Let's see where, and I, and I haven't really shown this too often in the past, but you can use your paraphrase, if not at the beginning, um, then at the end. So remember way back here, um, for those of you who hung around the whole class, uh, this was my paraphrase of the question. Okay, all the way back there. Let's stick that in for the conclusion. So in conclusion, Although certain individuals ascertain that it is necessary to purchase a house and start a good career before having offspring, I feel it is more important to provide basic physical needs and psychological support.
Children thrive when they receive nourishment and love uh, from from their parents. Okay, so this is <clears throat> the um, points restated. This is the argument strengthened. And now I just need my take-home message. Um, the take-home message should always be um, a message that can be clearly seen in the essay. Okay, so it has to be in the essay. It, it cannot be a new idea. You should be very, very careful never to include a new idea in your conclusion because that becomes very confusing uh, for the reader. So you shouldn't write something like, so parents need to buy a car before they have children. Okay, what? Where did the car come from? Right, so <clears throat> careful with that, careful with that, okay? Uh, so take home message. Um, children do not care um, as much for wealth um, for financial wealth as much as they do for and time with parents. So that would be my take home message. Okay, children do not care as much for financial wealth as much as they do for emotional wealth and time with their parents. Now I'm repeating the word wealth here on purpose, right? Um, okay, so there is my complete essay. Now at home, in the IELTS, you might not have time for this. If you do, great. If you don't, uh, no big deal. Um, as long as you reviewed each paragraph after you finished writing it, it should be okay. Um, at home, definitely review your whole essay um, after you read it at least a couple times, once right after you finish, and then again a day later, and again a week later, okay? So at home, while preparing for IELTS, review your essay first, right after you write it, uh, second, the next day, and make improvements. And third, a week later. Okay, um, writing can always be made better and better and better. So this is a really good strategy to improve your thinking, your writing. Um, here we go. So members, let's read this. And Slow Sunset Vibes, I see your conclusion. Romelia, I see that you're writing there as well. Romelia, try to take out um, the will, okay? Uh, avoid the use of will in academic essays as much as possible. Um, you can research that. Again, it's just um, there's a lot of reasons why we do it. I'm not going to get into it too much right now because I'm kind of running out of time. But um, but you don't want to use the word will too much in essays, okay? Especially not when you're using it for the future participle, okay? So here, um, most parents wish to provide the best possible environment for their children. An ideal context allows children to develop and succeed in life, but it is unclear what this may be. Although a home and a good career do give important support for having children, these are not essential for fostering offspring. Um, I believe that providing sustenance needs and emotional support is critical. Since a home provides shelter and a good career provides finances, children have a better chance at a positive environment for growth but these do not automatically give emotional support to kids. 
Indeed, it is often the case that professions and homes take a lot of time and energy away from parents, and children are neglected, which leads to poor self-confidence and mental health. One of my good friends, John, is often depressed because his parents, who are a doctor and a lawyer, were always so busy with their careers that they paid little attention to his emotional needs. So clearly, a good job and owning a home are not mutually inclusive of providing a good environment for having children. In order for children to be happy in life, they need the basics of food, shelter, and clothing, as well as love and confidence. The development of children is best perceived as both physical and psychological. For the former, good nutrition and warmth are needed. For the latter, it is caring and empathy from parents that is required. Parents can give this support even if the home is rented and with a minimal number of finances, as long as parents have the time and energy to spend with their children. My friend Mary has a part-time job and rents an apartment, but she spends a lot of time with her daughter, who seems very happy and confident. In conclusion, although certain individuals ascertain it is necessary to purchase a house and start a good career before having offspring, I feel it is more important to provide basic physical and psychological support. Children thrive when they receive nourishment, love, and support from their parents. Children do not care as much for financial wealth as they do for emotional wealth and time with their parents. with mom and dad sounds even better. Um, okay, uh, members, that's the essay and lots of really great writing in the chat. I watched that, that was good, okay? Um, there you go, there you have it. That answers that essay question and gives you lots of ideas of what to do and how to do all in 90 minutes. Whew, you've done amazing. Coming up, listening, practice with me in 30 minutes students we are using our websites aehelp.com and giltshelp.com uh, for the listening practice carolina thank you for uh being here moderating yanni romelia rajveer nice of you to hop in for that session and give us some good ideas on what is a topic and some good Sentences, really nice writing um, by uh, some of our members there. Slow Sunset Vibes, I believe you wrote the whole essay yourself. Make sure to copy all of your sentences from the chat and put it together. Have it for your records, okay? I'll see you in 30 minutes back here for some listening, everybody. Um, go to our websites, uh, click those big red buttons uh, to join our premium packages so you can use the listening audio right there, okay? And um, in the 30 minutes, uh, take a break, stretch the legs, get yourself a glass of water, Think in English, speak in English, come back and then listen in English. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria for now, but I will be back shortly. This next class will be a subscribers chat class, so make sure to subscribe to the channel, um, get notifications of the live classes, and join in on the fun. Bye for now.